Infrared spectroscopy is a tool that allows us to identify the functional groups within a molecule without gaining any information really about how those functional groups are connected to each other. And as you tackle infrared spectroscopy problems, I would encourage you to start with the big picture and then focus in on the important elements of a spectrum. And that boils down to kind of dividing up the infrared region of the spectrum into very specific regions. So some of these that we've talked about are above 3000, where we find the OH, the NH, and the sp2 and sp hybridized carbon hydrogen stretches out that way. And then we have between 2500 and 2000, where, which is where we find most of our carbon, 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 nitrogen, triple bond sort of stretches. Between 2000 and 1500 is where we typically see our double bond stretches, for example, for alkenes and carbonyls, and everything to the right of 1500 is generally either fingerprint region junk or specific stretches of CC, CN, and CO that aren't always very diagnostically useful. So dividing up the infrared spectrum in this way, we can already begin to notice some things about the spectrum in front of us here. First of all, the big thing to notice is that we're staring right in the face of a huge peak that's well outside of 3000, and this is of course the hydroxyl peak, characteristic of the OH stretch. So there's clearly an OH group within our structure. We don't see any peaks that look like CH stretches beyond 3000, and so that means that we're dealing only with sp3 hybridized carbons in this structure, and that's an important conclusion to draw. The other most important peak to pay attention to here shows up right about in the middle of the 2000 to 2500 range right here. And this is characteristic either of an alkyne or a nitrile, but it's on the higher end for an alkyne, so a nitrile is a little bit more likely. That peak is more squarely in the range of a nitrile. And in fact, this compound is hydroxypropionitrile, which contains both the hydroxyl group and the nitrile or cyano group. Here's a second example of an infrared spectrum from which we can identify some functional groups. Once again, before I even really dive in and start looking at peaks, I'm going to chunk out the spectrum into specific regions by drawing lines across it. So again, we have the 3000 dividing line. We've got the 2000 to 2500 range, which is where our triple bonds are going to show up. 2000 to 1500, which is where our double bonds are going to show up. And then the fingerprint rate region and heavy atom single bond stretches which show up south of 1500. Now, what do we see having chunked things up like this? Well, once again, we have a very broad peak showing up in the neighborhood of 3,000 wave numbers. And it looks like there may be some overlap here with peaks in the 2,800 to 3,000 range, but this very broad downward sloping peak here is, again, characteristic of an OH group. The peaks just south of 3,000 are indicative of sp3 hybridized carbons bonded to hydrogens. And finally, we have a very clear and very strong peak showing up right about 1700. In cases where you see both a carbonyl group, particularly one in the 1700 to maybe 1780 range, and a hydroxyl group, it's a good bet that the structure you're looking at contains the carboxylic acid functionality. Nothing else in this structure really jumps out at us. The fingerprint region consists mainly of medium to weak peaks with nothing terribly strong that's jumping out. And sure enough, the true structure of the compound that gives this infrared spectrum is an alkyl carboxylic acid, which contains just CSP3H, carbon-carbon single bonds, and a carboxylic acid functional group. In this final example, we're seeing a lot of action in the fingerprint region along with the typical sorts of peaks we see around 3000 for CH stretches and things north of 3000 for heteroatom H stretches. In particular, we can notice that we see, in addition to some CH peaks that are north of 3000, indicating CSP2 or SPH stretches, 
We also see these two peaks farther out, which seem to be indicative of an OH or an NH. And this two-pronged appearance in particular indicates the presence of a primary amine. Remember that a primary amine, which contains two NH bonds, will contain two peaks in the NH stretching region of the spectrum. So there's likely a primary amine within this structure as well. We've also got the, by now, fairly typical sp3 carbon H stretches. And we should also take note of what's going on down in the fingerprint region, especially since we have these very strong peaks that are showing up in the fingerprint region. In particular, we see that we've got a pair of peaks right around 11, 12, 13, 14, 50, 14, 75, something like that. And then a third peak here up at about maybe 1600 or so. These three peaks in particular are indicative of an aromatic structure. And notice that the presence of an aromatic structure goes very well with our observation from before that this compound contains sp2 hybridized carbons bonded to hydrogen. Except for phenyl groups that are substituted on all six carbons, which are relatively rare, whenever we see an aromatic stretch in the region of 1450 to about 1600, we should expect sp2CH bonds as well. So to review, we've identified an aromatic group, a primary amine, and alkyl groups within this structure. And indeed, the true structure that gives this infrared spectrum is benzyl amine, which includes a primary amine, a CH2 group, which is the origin of our sp3 hybridized carbon H stretches, and a monosubstituted benzene ring.